about to be uh, aware, to, to set aside the occasion to, to speak about the time that is past and to, to set our attention on the time that is yet to come. To reflect upon the workings of God in the last year and to look expectantly towards the next one. Uh, our remembrance serves not only to help us stir up the things of God that have we have seen and been partakers of in the last year, but also uh, as an occasion to, to, for us to have a, a thank offering, as it were, an, an opportunity for us to give glory to God for what we've been able to see Him do in the last year. But in addition to this, our rehearsal of these things serves as a lesson, as it were, concerning the brevity of time. As it seems as if, if it, it was only yesterday that, that we were sitting in this very room remembering the year 2013. And this time actually bears an especially precious place in my own memory, considering the fact that this was, it was in this very room in the day, this very day in the year 2005 that I returned to the Lord. As I was musing upon these things, I thought about how, how time, although it has its many liabilities and hindrances, it also bears with it a sort of mercy, as it were, for mortal beings. The Lord in His wisdom has broken up our existence into sections, into hours and, and days, years and seasons. I remember whenever I first heard one of the brethren speak on this very um, subject and said, aren't you thankful that a day only lasts 24 hours? I was actually kind of thankful for that perspective. That's a, that's a good perspective. If, if it's true that sufficient to the day thereof is the, e it's sufficient to the day is the evil thereof, aren't you glad that you only have to live one of them at a time? Another way in which time can be used to our advantage, if it seem rightly, is that it, it's, they can be used to mark footholds, as it were, on your path to glory. The Lord himself throughout the history of Israel erected times and seasons as holy convocations to the Lord. Days and feasts and remembrances. He used times in light of the weakness of men as a reminder to them. As, con as a consideration of their frame, almost to impose a remembrance so that they did not have an excuse to forget. And while we might find ourselves in a much different position in Christ in light of the re renewing of our mind and our affections as, as still being tied to the body of this death, we still have need of such reminders as well. And I, for one, am thankful for them. We, we've actually just in the recent weeks passed out of a, a season of this kind of remembrance. We've been, we've been able to remember the birth of Christ. Uh, we have this every year. I'm, I'm thankful for this kind of a, of a remembrance. So that being said, as it is our custom, I, I want to use this time this evening to, as an encouragement as well as an exhortation concerning the things that the Lord has wrought, that we might fan the flames of our hope in one another. So let's this evening, let's consider this blessed hope which is set before us, which is confirmed in the testimony given to us as God, as well as in our own experience, some of the testimonies of which we've heard this evening. As, and... Um, we want to be, the goal this evening is that we might be quickened in running the race that is set before us. It's my aim this evening to make the aim, to make the mark which we are pressing towards seem as it is in fact much more desirable of a prize than any to be strived for. Amen. So there's, there's three specific aspects of this that I want to direct our attention towards this evening as, as we stand at the end of this year and look forward to what's to come to in the next. I want to exhort you to remember, brethren, to consider and to look. So firstly, to remember. As we look at the things that the Lord has worked among us in the last year, it could be very easy when you look back upon the happenings in your life to become nostalgic. To, to remember uh, the, the feelings and the circumstances of your life. That's the, the thing about memories. Our, our flesh tends to romanticize memories. Uh, Brother Jason has talked about this um, recently. And the, the flesh tends to remember the good old days, you know. To, to look back on good memories of things, you know, things always seem better than they are now. Satan has the potential to use your memory for, for bad things, to, 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 to direct you into all kind of side paths of thought. But uh, when actually the capacity to remember, to recall, it can be a great asset to the saints. Actually, you can derive the most benefit from memories when they're attached to an intelligent understanding of what the Lord was working in those times. This can be a very, a very good benefit. 
When you think back on your life, you do well to think about it within this framework. The, the, the happenings in your life, the, the people involved, the outcome of the things, they've all been designed according to a purpose. I was reminded as I was thinking about this of what Paul wrote in his first epistle to the Corinthians regarding the judgment of those who murmured in the wilderness. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, Now all these things happened unto them for end samples. Now, now I was reminded of the oft occurring phrase in scripture, and it came to pass. That is to say that there is nothing, there is a time for everything. Uh, God does not act on a whim. God never acts capriciously. Uh, things are made to happen. Things don't happen according to happenstance. It is his desire to be made known. It's God's desire to be made known. And as such, he works in accordance to this desire. And that being said, in consideration of our remembrance, this capacity to remember, it can be instrumental in building your reference to when thinking about the character and personality of God. There are many things that can be learned from the demonstration of God's person as is recorded in Scripture. However, we also learn these things through our experiences in our life. After all, God is a person and not a theory. And he, he is not to be studied, he is to be known. Um, it is not that God, as he has re revealed himself in the scripture, is inadequate to enable us to have a proper understanding of his person, but our experience confirms the faith that we have placed in his word. He reveals himself to us. This fellowship, this working together with God, it stabilizes our soul. It establishes us. This fellowship that we're able to have with one another, even this evening, this is an, an invaluable resource to the saints. And I found within my own experience this to be true, that the, the formation of holy memories is a valuable asset. As, as instructionable as it may be to consider your own individual experiences, more so it is as, as you look at it from, from the higher vantage point. And that's why gatherings like this can, can get an even better, uh, you, you can get an in, in, and this is why a gathering such as this, in my estimation, has the potential to have a, a much greater advantage to be able to see it everybody's experiences. Not only have we all learned and grown from our own experiences throughout this past year, uh, as we all come together and share what the Lord has done and worked in us in the last year, we, there's like a sort of spiritual multiplication that happens that, that we, we can't experience any other way. Amen. And as I was considering the occasion of this evening, I was reminded of the, uh, the appointment of time that God set forth at the birth, as it were, formally of the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. That I was edified in considering it th this, this past few weeks, how the Lord, when the children of Israel were um, delivered from Egypt, he began a new year. Uh, the Jewish calendar was established based upon the timing of this event. Uh, this would actually exist as a consistent, continual reminder of the reason why the nation existed in the first place, that they were a nation called out by God to be a peculiar people. Uh, the, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you a beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you when they were called out from Egypt. Uh, this event would forever be marked as a beginning of new things, a remembrance forever of God of his calling out of them to fulfill the promise given unto them of their fathers. Uh, I, I've known this for a long time, the, the, the fact of this, but I hadn't considered this um, in the context of the later words that were delivered unto Israel in regards to, to remembering this time in the same light, whenever he speaks to them about this event, he, he doesn't say, just remember what happened to you. He says, remember that he was the one that delivered them. He says, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of, out of the land of Egypt. He says it this way in Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that not obeyeth the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, uh, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them according to which I command you. So in looking from this, from the, from the bigger picture, I was reminded um, from our own beginning of days, as it were, we too, we've been given like a spiritual marker from the beginning of our calling out. Only instead of the beginning of the year, it's, it's as oft as ye drink it. 
I, I'm I'm thankful that we don't have to wait like once a year for this occasion. This is something we this is something we do at this table every week. We we celebrate this blessed occasion every week at the Lord's table. This is like the beginning of our spiritual year, so to speak. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do short show the Lord's death till he come. Every time we come to this table, brethren, we're celebrating the birth of the body of Christ, of the calling out of the chosen of God, and the beginning of our, our new birth every, every week. It's the same thing. Not only collectively, but individually as well. We each recall how and when we were found of him whom we sought not. We remember what was done for us so that we would have the privilege to eat at this table. But more profoundly than this, we remember the one by whom it was performed and the one who ever lives and reigns, the one in whom now our life is hid with in God. This is a, a, a blessing, brethren, that we can actually we can remember what the Lord no longer remembers. <laughs> That, that he says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I exhort you to remember that, brethren, and I exhort you to consider. Yeah. And to, to consider involves thinking about something carefully. But it is, it, is to consider, it is to think about it carefully in order to make a decision or a judgment. And it can also involve thinking before you do something that might make someone upset or angry. Now, this phrase is used often in Scripture as an exhortation to men. It, it says, consider your ways. That phrase is used often. Think, in other words, think about what you are doing. I want this evening to encourage you to consider. I've said it this way many times before. To, I want you to live intentionally. Now, that sounds... Sounds kind of stupid, you know, but you actually can not live intentionally. There are really only two modes of living, and that is pressing forward and drawing back. Uh, and while I'm confident this evening that I am talking to brethren who are not sloppy in their mode of living, that I am also not naive enough to think that it's not possible for, for us to fall away. Uh, there are actually brethren who have sat in this meeting and have listened to the very same things that we have listened to who have fallen away. Uh, so so there, there's two specific texts that I want to commend to you regarding this consideration. Primarily, uh, Hebrews 12, 3, For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. For if one moment, for if for one moment you are tempted to sit down by the wayside and rest for the heaviness of your walk in the world, consider what the Lord Jesus bore for you. If you think that you have weights and burdens, if you think that you have problems, if you think that your sorrow and your pain is heavy, if you think that your trials and temptations are sore, consider him. Amen. If the one that created the worlds who came to his own and they received him not, who created the world and who was with God and was God, who was in the beginning with God, who was from everlasting to everlasting God, stepped down from eternity to embody a body of flesh. And consider that that same one who bore it all for you, that same one who knew no sin, who became sin for you, the one who was bruised for your iniquities, to have the sin of the world placed in his body on the tree, who is now sitting on the right hand of God for you on your behalf. Consider the one who endured such a trial, such an affliction for you, is now acting as your high priest, and as the propitiation for your sins, and not for your sins only, for before the sins of the whole world how can you but give your life for him how can you but give your all to him how can you but give the one who gave his soul an offering for sin how can you but give your whole heart mind soul and body for him and secondly as it can as it concerns this consideration and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And this is, this is something, brethren, that I've seen us get better at every year continually. 
uh, to, to be more considerate and more intentional of, but it's something that we can't always be better about, living more aware of our connection to one another as members of the body of Christ. This is something that, that, that we've grown of in our knowledge of. This not, involves not only thinking of others, but, but of applying yourself to be as profitable as you can be, to be the most benefit in, in your individual gifts. If you're provided an opportunity to minister, to, to do so with this in mind, uh, to be considerate of how you are affecting the fellow members of the body. To, to, and also living with eternity in mind, knowing that you're not going to forever be an in, individual. Consider the high nature of your calling, brethren, the, the, the place to where we are being directed. Amen. And lastly, brethren, I want to exhort you to look. I thought this was kind of interesting as I was looking into this. Every, instru- every instance in which the word looking is used in the New Testament, it is mentioned... Uh, in a forward posture, and something towards the end of times. It is talked about uh, looking for a new heavens and a new earth, looking t- for the, towards the mercy of God unto eternal life, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, looking for that blessed hope. It's, it's mentioned twice, looking for, you know, for a fearful judgment and wrath to come. But it, it just intrigued me that it's always in prospect of things to come. We don't, it, it's never really used talking about a here and now kind of thing. It's, and it's not, it's not a mere glance. We're not talking about just a, a, a brief. It's, it's, a, it's a fixation. It's, some, it's like Jesus having his, his, his face set yeah. towards Jerusalem. So, so I want to I exhort you, brethren, to, to look. Look. Think about the promises of God. Set your glance upon the things that, are, that is to come. As you remember this evening, remember what God has promised. Now, we, the, this is a time that the world talks about a New Year's resolution. You know, there's a lot of really superficial things that they're going to talk about that they want to accomplish, you know. And, and there's not really anything wrong with wanting to do better, you know. <laughs> Even the flesh realizes that you, you can do better. But um, uh, as, as you consider the last year... Maybe last year was not such a good year for you. Maybe you had, did have some disappointments this last year. You, maybe you had some shortcomings and some stumblings. Uh, the, the, the wicked one can use your memory in, in, in a bad way in this. I appreciated what um, Brother Tony said in his, in his opening in, the, in this um, a couple weeks ago. He said, I've been delivered from that. Mm-hmm. I want you to think about that. Yeah. I want you to thank the Lord for that. If, this, if that's true of this last year, you can overcome that. Make this next year a better year. Maybe this last year was a good year for you. Maybe you've seen some new things. Maybe you've opened up some new vistas of truth. This has been a really high year from you. Labor for this next year to not, to, to not go down. Don't let yourself go down from that high vista of truth. I want to exhort you, this brethren, this next year to keep yourselves in the love of God. I want to exhort you to look for the mercy. Thank you, brethren.